तो रेशमा सर प्लीज स्टार्ट ओके अरविंद नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल हाय फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इंट्रोड्यूस योरसेल्फ रिगार्डिंग योर एजुकेशनल बैकग्राउंड एंड योर वर्क एक्सपीरियंस सो माय सेल्फ अरविंद हेलिंग फ्रॉम केरला आई हैव कंप्लीटेड माय ग्रेजुएशन बीटेक मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग फ्रॉम एससीटीसी द कॉलेज इन ट्रिवांड्रम इटसेल्फ आफ्टर द ग्रेजुएशन आई स्ट्रेट अवे वेंट फॉर सिविल सर्विस प्रिपरेशन वेंट फॉर इंटरव्यू वंस इन 2016 आफ्टर दैट कंटीन्यूअसली गिवन मेंस Uh, now this is my first forest interview uh, for the last 3 uh, years i have been for working as a faculty in one of the coaching institute in kerala itself as environment ecology faculty okay so uh, you have studied mechanical engineering right yes sir so can you tell us five subject any five subject which you have studied in the course of your four years uh, sir refrigeration and air conditioning uh, studied in one year then mechanics of mechanics of solids mos another subject then instrumentation engineering another subject then uh, uh, so sorry sir this is three subject that straight away coming into mind okay no problem fine and uh, can you tell us the second law of thermodynamics um sir it uh, it, it, it second law of thermodynamics tells of the conservation of energy as far as i know i'm not very sure about it it tells about the conservation of energy okay no problem uh, can you differentiate between two two stroke engine and four stroke engine uh so two the stroke basic and, difference so it is about the piston movement in the two stroke engine piston will be moving twice and in a four stroke engine it will be moving uh, four times in a cycle and, and associated efficiency is also different engine efficiency is more for four stroke engine and efficiency is less for two stroke engine how many revolutions are there in two stroke and four stroke um, sir can i take a guess yes go ahead so sir in uh, two stroke engine there will be two complete uh, one complete uh, revolution and in four stroke engine two complete revolutions yes it's fine okay so uh, you have written your hobby as trekking as well right yes sir so can you differentiate between mountaineering trekking and uh, hiking um sir so mountaineering means uh, 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 an extreme level of trekking where you will uh, you will be climbing uh, mountains with more than uh, say 3000 meters of height a trekking would be a uh, 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 trekking would be can 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 be done in mountains as well as in forest trails and hiking will be a, a lesser form of trekking uh, with uh, a longer time for the completion of the trail okay uh, can you recommend us some of uh, the trek uh, trek or the trekking which you have done like any uh, so the toughest trek in uh, kerala is uh, agastyar gudam trekking it is the longest and toughest trek in kerala it is part of agastyamala biosphere reserve that is one of the important trek that you have to uh, conduct in kerala and second thing is uh, chempra trekking in vayanadu that is again one of the toughest and longest uh, trek in trails in kerala uh, so can you tell us few of the flora and fauna which you have seen while trekking Uh, sir uh, when i did my agastyar gudan trekking I, we can see four different three or four different types of uh, fauna uh, on the top of the agastyar gudan mountain you can see the shola uh, grassland uh, it is above uh, 1500 meters then in between shola you can see uh, uh, evergreen uh, vegetation in agastyar gudan then you can see also see grassland uh, one common species would be lemon grass which is uh, along on the related to agastya gudam that is these three are the made the fauna found in agastya gudam trekking then uh, for flora found in agastya gudam trekking then fauna would be you can see uh, bison goats elephant uh, that is basically a part of uh, agastya himalaya biosphere reserve you can see uh, enough all these uh, fauna along the trekking okay uh, and can you tell us few uses of lemon grass which you have just mentioned Uh, so uh, lemon grass commonly used as a it is processed as a minor forest produce mainly it is used to uh, make repellents insect repellents and pest repellents and it is also uh, used as a uh, antiseptic uh, uh, in households okay so do you know about this ebc in the trekking field uh, no sir i am not very aware of it everest base camp 
uh, heard about it sir but uh, not very much about the particular trekking any idea about its its altitude uh, everest base camp or sir the everest trekking of everest, everest. no no base camp altitude um uh if i want to take it guys i'll tell us at around 15000 meters of feet okay 17000 feet okay approximately right yes okay. uh and can you tell us what is this sphere of altitude known as no sir for having any idea about it okay no problem so you have also mentioned that you participated in this sanskrit quiz right yes sir and you won also yes yeah, sir i won a uh, uh, a grade in state level sanskrit kids uh, part of school youth was in kerala okay nice so i will be asking you few of the uh, sandhi vichets right you understand that uh, sir actually sandhi vichet is part of sanskrit grammar and this quiz is mostly about the literature part i'm not very sure about the grammar part of it okay okay no problem still you can try it right sure 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 uh, so uh, can you tell me this uh, what is the sandhi vichet of swagat uh so uh, su plus agada yes yes su plus agada right and ityadi okay. iti plus adi sir yes it's perfectly fine thank you and my last one uh, what is this pavan sorry sir pavan pavan i would have any idea regarding this sir if you give me the context i will try to answer air pavan pavan yo pavan meaning yes. of pavan is air yes sir and sandhi vichet okay okay to part of that question right i thought it was a different question pavan no sir uh, no idea no problem uh, so can you t- recite one shlok and its meaning uh show sir Not, uh, in this local right now, not coming into my mind. Okay, no problem. Uh, so can you tell us what is this classical language? Uh, sir, classical is 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 Uh, to assess the classicality of a particular language, based on this criteria, uh, languages like Malayalam, uh, Tamil, Sanskrit, etc., has uh, got the classical language. Okay, fine. And uh, uh, can you tell us which language has been recently added in this list? Are you aware of this? So latest, uh, I think it's Malayalam lately. post malayalam i don't remember exactly okay well, malayalam uh, the okay. sorry i got the i lost Let's the connection oh, okay no problem we'll move to the next part okay right okay. Uh, so so badminton is also one of your hobby right uh, sir uh, it had given in the daf one of the daf one of the application i don't not i am not very sure about whether it will be considered sure. or not okay no problem so who is the dfo of your district uh dfo i don't know sir okay so it's tiruvananthapuram right yes sir and why is it also known as trivandrum sir tiruvananthapuram in malayalam means tiru anandapuram tiru means uh, respectful anandapuram means the city is dedicated the rulers of travancore earlier it dedicated to the deity of uh, ananda a form of vishnu that is what tiruvananthapuram and trivandrum is the anglicized form of uh, the malayalam word tiruvananthapuram okay okay so you are from kerala and there has been recent controversy regarding this movie the kerala story right yes sir yes sir and uh, few, few people uh, are opposing that this should be banned the director should be put behind the bars so what's your take on this uh sir uh, constitution of india gives every citizens of the country to express themselves uh, uh, to an extent uh, there has been only 
reasonable restrictions provided it will not cause any harm to the societal feelings or the broader feelings unless an entity causes a larger security interest or a national security threat uh, there is no need to ban an artistic work because everyone has the freedom to express themselves and it should be the society uh, uh, we should be accepting decide, decide whether, deciding whether to accept the story or uh, reject the story or evaluate the story based on their intellectual capability so i believe that banning movies or uh, publications is not a good act in a democracy like india but uh, don't you think it is defaming the whole state as well the movie uh, so personally i have been watched the movie per se so i am not in a position to comment upon the uh, subjects discussed in the movie so i'm not very sure about it okay okay thank you arvin that's all from my side uh, now over to you man sir uh, you are not audible i think am i uh, audible now yep yeah yes sir yes sir on now sir am i audible now right i hope uh, it is working yes yes right? yes yes so like uh, arvind uh, you have mostly like lived in kerala so can you tell me can you give me your insights on what are the three most important developmental challenges of kerala as well as three strength of kerala in your assessment oh, sure sir uh, going to the developmental challenges uh, in kerala first thing kerala is a land scarce state uh, it's a very small state with uh, high population density so uh, development of huge infrastructural uh, facilities like a uh, six way lines or a, uh, a railway track would be difficult for kerala that is one developmental challenge second thing is uh, kerala is largely a, a service based economy it is largely dependent upon uh, secondary sector of economic activity so uh, industrialization is the second hurdle developmental hurdle of kerala then third thing would be kerala is an aging society uh, its uh, demographic dividend is mostly closer towards the uh, senior citizens or the uh, aging citizens so finding Uh, younger population or reaping the democratic democratic dividend in the future will be a major developmental threat to Kerala. And uh, threat to uh, these are the major developmental threat to Kerala. And moving towards the first is Kerala is a knowledge oriented economy. So in future Kerala can very much utilize its knowledge base. For example, Kerala have a very strong IT sector, uh, medical sector, and Ayurveda sector. These all three are uh, knowledge based sector. So Kerala can make use of it. and kerala has given an alternative developmental development model known as kerala model development to the uh, world so uh, peop- uh, countries and states with low income and low state of economic development can actually uh, adapt this kerala model of development that is uh, one uh, second most important positive aspect of kerala and kerala uh, is one state in india we can uh, uh, put aside as uh, put uh, put above as a state having a strong social board Uh, which can be seen in the during during the time of nipa covid flood etc and uh, a strong social bond occurrence of a so strong social bond this would be a major positive of kerala which i can project all right so like uh, you said that kerala still does not have a very developed secondary sector but despite yes, uh, a lot of good ingredients like social bond you know a literate population even digital literacy financial literacy all these things are there so the skilling is also easy also it is also very tolerant in a state so in that sense, it, it it in that uh, sense why the industrial development has not yet happened there uh, so there are multiple reasons for not happening industrial development in kerala one thing is major thing is kerala is resource deficient in terms of mines in terms of minerals kerala is not that much rich, rich unlike other states so unavailability of resources in kerala can be one reason and second re- second reason trade unionism if we look in a political perspective trade unionism and radical movement of political parties can be another reason hathals and bends are a common feature in kerala so industrialists are in a fear of starting new ventures and uh, new factories uh, in the fear of hathals and bends that can be another reason third thing kerala from agricultural uh, sector straight away jump to service sector because of the historical and associated reason so in uh, uh, in the past 70 years kerala had in that much experience in extra uh, industrial sector kerala had a very strong service sector and for the last 75 years it has been depending upon in service sector so uh, the service sector again for over emphasis on service sector also de- contributed to the declining uh, manufacturing sector in or industrial sector in kerala all right so uh, arvin 
yes, uh, how many national parks wildlife sanctuary and tiger reserves are there in kerala so there are six national parks in kerala uh, should i name sir or just a number only no, it's all right give the number okay right. okay so this are six, six national parks and 16 wildlife sanctuaries and two tiger reserves okay and what are the name of tiger reserve so periyar tiger reserve and parambikulam tiger reserve periyar is in idiki and parambikulam is in palakka all right so have you visited any of these uh, tiger reserve or national park yes sir periyar tiger reserve i have visited all right all right so like uh, what uh, like just you, you have visited and you are also into tracking so just uh, as, uh, uh, which of the following or which of the uh, wild animal is your favorite animal uh, sir elephant always sir uh, particularly with yes sir elephant that why, that has why, been a why pop- sir uh, elephant uh, one thing uh, we have been we kerala have been uh, very much exposed to elephants from our day one itself because it's part of our temple culture if part of our procession culture so elephant is a very common animal to us and uh, seeing elephant in its wild habitat original habitat seeing us uh, giving give, will be giving us very happy uh, enjoyment uh, so these are the two primary reasons sir all right so uh like uh, there has been in news there has been some species uh, which are known as invasive species and they are they are one of the problems in the forest of kerala so yes, can, sir. can you name uh, four or five invasive species uh, in general and um, at least two or three specific to kerala uh, sir grantis uh, a subspecies of eucalyptus is one of the major uh, invasive species in kerala it is causing harm in uh, throughout the western ghats so grandis is one of the major invasive species uh, then senna spectabilis is another major invasive species found in kerala so senna tree is another one uh, then in general water hyacinth which has been invading the water bodies all over kerala is another major threat water hyacinth then prosopis juliflora it can be another major invasive species found all along western ghats so these are the four major invasive species so like what is the issue with prosopis juliflora Uh, like w- uh, what is the environmental uh, negatives of this species in general uh, so prosopis juliflora other than this invasion capacity it is very known for its allelopathic effect uh, it can cause some uh, allelopathic effect that is it can be detrimental to the growth of uh, surrounding uh, uh, tree species so that is one of the major environmental concern of prosopis juliflora other than major issues like water consumption resource consumption etc like it can cons- it can cons- it consumes what kind of water ground water sir ground water okay so it it consumes ground water yes sir so like generally what is the depth of ground water uh, in in your area like there must there must be bore well there must be you know, tube wells so are you aware what is the depth of those at what depth will, will you get water geology you are also student of geology you must have read that in hydrogeology uh, not very sure about sir the depth of the aquifers okay are are you aware at what depth generally do we find coal and at what depth do we find petroleum uh, so can i take a guess yes uh, so roughly uh, 400 to 500 meter below the ground in general uh, coal or uh, uh, petroleum coal 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 okay okay and petroleum uh, petroleum not sure sir okay like coal also we don't mind uh, like you, you must have heard about it uh, about open cast mining so they don't mine up to 500 meters right it is too deep yes sir so uh, yes, just sir. not more than 300 meter we do okay. you know coal mining and for petroleum we can go as deep as you know 3 to 4 kilometers uh, even below, below the sea surface uh, sea bed so okay sir that is, right? and ground water uh, you you will get that get it, it around 150 feet to 500 feet right something like sure that. sir so sure sir uh, so do, uh, do, now do you think that uh, the the process is julie for it it uh, basically consumes ground water because can its root go d- as deep as 200 300 uh, um, feet it not so basically soil moisture right soil moisture soil. So okay sir difference okay. between soil moisture and ground water right okay sir okay so thank you all right so uh, anyways <laughs> like uh, we have seen like uh, we have seen uh, there are you know perceptible impact of climate change in himalayas right like receding yes, glacier you know, there are changes in vegetation so uh, uh, can you tell me such you know receptible uh, visible changes or effect of 
क्लाइमेट चेंज ऑन वेस्टर्न घाट इको सिस्टम सो वन थिंग वुड बी uh reducing the depletion of ground water that that is one major uh, issue we can experience in western ghats is very much tangible here uh, that is one thing major one thing then uh, loss of western ghats being one of the hottest of the hotspot uh, loss of very uh, what uh, very flora endemic species of flora and fauna uh, that can be another major tangible evidence of climate change in, which can be observed like, in western ghats is, is there any you know extinction of any species in the recent years in kerala any endemic species no sir uh, not any species specific extinction but studies say that western ghats uh, one of the major biodiversity areas around the world it has so, lost like, around you, 70% you, you are explaining that this could happen i am asking is there any perceptible changes already like no sir uh, 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 tangible effect would be depletion of ground water only okay so how uh, this uh, uh, ground water is affected by uh, climate change uh sir uh, climate change in uh, one way or another is connected to activities like uh, deforestation so deforestation and depletion of natural resources so de- deple- deforestation western ghats uh, can lead to uh, depletion of the ground water because for western ghats loss is ability to absorb and infiltrate uh, rain water and surface water deep into the ground okay like can you tell me in general what is the difference between the ecosystem in himalayas and in the western ghats how the ecosystem of western ghats are different from the himalayas uh sir in uh, uh, with respect to ecosystem in western ghats where you can see uh, evergreen forest uh, in terms of in the form of uh, fl- fauna in uh, western ghats but uh, mountain forests are mostly found in uh, himalayan ecosystem and in terms of species richness western ghats is high western ghat has very high species richness and species uh, uh, diversity whereas uh, in himalayan ecosystem uh, species diversity as in western ghat uh, so then uh, in western ghat you can see many tribes associated with this uh, forest ecosystem and in, in himalayas there you can see less in number of tribes so can you can you tell uh, tell us few of the tribal group from kerala Uh, sir so chola naikar kata naikar kudaga karumba these are the four major tribes in western ghats so uh, okay so is, is there any any uh, tribal specific schemes by the state government for the welfare of these tribal groups uh, yes sir uh, there are two uh, there, there is uh, kani tribes in western ghats is actually in my district itself uh, trivandrum itself this kani uh, tribes uh, they have uh, conserving a particular herb known as sarpagandhi arogya pacha if i'm not wrong arogya pacha and it, it it has been used for that drug is used for making um, uh, what a uh, uh, drug which which is which can be utilized for many diseases so this uh, state government and ngos have been in a uh, agreement with this kani tribes to make preserve this arogya pacha that is one thing and vanasri is another initiative by state government uh, to market uh, minor forest producers prepared by these tribes so these two are the major initiatives all right so you also have this geology back, uh, geology optional so like uh, in current in recently you, you must have heard about saligram fossils like have you heard about saligram fossils uh, not sir i have been heard about it okay so all right uh okay so tell me in in what ways earthquake is measured right in what scale earthquake is measured sir uh, in order to measure earthquake uh, earthquake we have uh, two scales and intensity scale and uh, magnitude scale and for measuring intensity we have uh, richter scale and for measuring magnitude we have mercalli scale actually it's opposite right Richter is for in, uh, magnitude and intensity. We have Mercalli, oh, right? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry, right. sorry. So, like uh, recently, there was an earthquake in Turkey, which was it was very devastating. And then, you know, after that, there was also an earthquake in Afghanistan, which was also uh, in good magnitude, right? In a high, large magnitude. But like, why was this Afghanistan earthquake was less devastating uh, given its magnitude? Can you explain it? Uh. sir if i can i take a guess sir yes uh, sir uh, sir it would be about the stability of place in afghanistan and turkey the stability of the place there in turkey would be more less stable than the plate plate in afghanistan 
Okay, so like if the plates are stable in Afghanistan, so why why was there an earthquake? Okay, what uh, so what what, are, what all plates are there uh, in Turkey, right? And what are tectonic plates are involved? Um, uh, sir, I'm not sure about the plates there. Okay, okay. Chalo, read about it, right? Uh, okay, sure, like sir. The, the answer lies in the previous question, right? The, it is about in, intensity and you know magnitude thing, right? So even it was half high magnitude, but the intensity was low because there was less people and other things, right? Uh, okay, okay, sir. Read about it. Okay, okay so so uh, I think uh, I, I have covered most of the topic. Okay, one last question from uh, forestry. Or, or general yes, right there there is recently debate going on about uh, same sex marriage right in the supreme court so uh, you tell me are the sex and gender these two things are independent or they are dependent on each other uh sir sex is a biological term uh, i would say and gender is more more like a uh, we have uh, we have been uh, we we should be add a sociological perspective into the term gender uh, so these two are interconnected very much interconnected uh, biologically, sex can be uh, different, but through education, through skilling, uh, the parity between disparity between gender can be reduced. So, in many ways, they can be they are connected. Okay. So, I, I think uh, Arvind, we have asked enough question. So, I think we can end the session here. So, you can leave the.